Happy New Year from Debbie Brown Quilts. I wanted to share with you one of my very favorite things. So today I'm going to show you how to quilt a cupcake. A young member of our family calls them happy cakes instead of cupcakes because she's used to having happy cakes, cupcakes, for birthday parties where you sing happy birthday. So today we're going to quilt happy cakes. Uh, I am using a, a home sewing machine. This is my Handy Quilter Stitch 710, and I do have a ruler foot attached to this machine. Check on your machine to make sure you have the ability to use rulers. It's, it's about having the right foot, and it's about knowing which size ruler works with your machine. This machine uses one quarter inch rulers, which are the same as my long arm machine quilting rulers. So I can use the same ones that I use on my long arm. So I can put the ruler right next to my foot and stitch against it. Again, these are one quarter inch rulers. These are not rotary cutting rulers. They're made for machine quilting. Uh, the rulers I'm using today are a mini scallop ruler. It has a straight edge and a scalloped edge to make the ruffle on the cupcake paper. And I'm also gonna use one of my favorite rulers. It's called a right angle ruler. Uh, it has a really nice corner on it. The other thing I'm using to help me quilt is ruler grip. It's, I'm using handy grip. It will make it so that I can move the quilt with the ruler instead of moving the quilt with my hand and holding onto the ruler and not being able to move the quilt very well. The ruler grip actually helps me use the ruler as a quilting assistant. I am using my Fabulux thread. This color is called Wisteria. It's a really pretty purple. Uh, it is a 40 weight, three ply, trilobal polyester. So I have a size 90 needle in here, which is a little bigger eye. And in the bobbin, I'm going to use Deco Bob. Uh, this is a nice lavender color, so they'll match well together. I'm gonna turn this, this happy cake into a postcard. So I don't really care what the tension looks like on the back, because it's gonna be fused in the middle of a postcard. Uh, what I uh, want is that for the front to look good. So we are only have to worry about the top if you're making it as a postcard. If you're using it on a quilt, you're gonna have to play with your tension top and bobbin. I'm also using bands on my hand to help me move the fabric. This keeps my fingers free so I can hold on to the ruler, but it helps me move the fabric around without having to push down so hard with my hands. The last thing I've done to get ready to quilt is I've drawn two lines on my fabric. I have a two inch line and a three inch line, and I have drawn those perfectly centered one and a half inches apart here so that I can quilt my cupcake paper and it won't be lopsided or crooked. So I'm ready to get started. The first tool I'm going to use is this right angle ruler. I'm going to put it down with the ruler grip side touching the fabric. My foot down, my feed dogs down, and I'm going to put my needle down, needle up, and I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread. It's just habit. I could leave it on the back, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put my needle down. And I'm putting the edge of the ruler right over my foot, and I'm rotating it so it is one quarter of an inch away from where that line ends. And I'm going to stitch up to the line and retrace that line right back down to the ruler. I'm going to rotate this foot, the ruler, so that the ruler is touching the previous stitch line. I'm just going to try to get my hand out of the way for you. And I'm going to stitch up to the line and back down. Rotate over. So 
So that is the corner of my cupcake paper. Uh, now I'm going to make the folds in the paper and I'm going to make them a quarter inch apart. This is one quarter inch foot. So if I stitch along my bottom line, I can stop when I hit the one quarter inch mark on my ruler here, or I can stop whenever I see that my foot is touching the previously stitched line because the foot is an also a quarter inch measurement. I'm gonna move the ruler over, stitch up to the line, back down, and over a quarter of an inch. Move, up, down, over, slide. Now, when I stitch over one last quarter of an inch, I'm at the end of my bottom line. What I'm going to do is stitch a line straight up and back down. I'm gonna start rotating that ruler again. So I'm gonna have the ruler touch the top of the previously stitched line, which will help me stitch at an angle and back. Tip over again. And back. And one more should do it. I'm trying to end right on the end of my line. stitched up to end at the top. If my line goes, if my stitch line goes outside of my drawn line, um, a millimeter or two, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to take this blue line away. I'm going to put some water on here and the water erasable marker marking will go away. So it's kind of an approximate just to help me keep it smooth. I've brought in my mini scallop ruler and I'm going to use this to stitch the ruffles on top of my cupcake paper. So here's a ruffle, a ruffle, a ruffle, and I'm ending that approximately at the end of my line. Now I'm putting my, my machine quilting um, bands back on, and I'm going to stitch some ribbon candy for the icing. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know that my favorite machine quilting technique is ribbon candy. So I think it makes beautiful icing, and let's see how that goes. So one really big swirl of icing here, and a little bit smaller swirl here, and a little bit smaller here. I'm just going to put a little curl of icing at the top because we're fancy. Let's take this to the cutting mat and get it ready to turn into a postcard. I have a 5 inch by 6 inch piece of stabilizer and a 5 inch by 6 inch piece of white or cream fabric for the back of my postcard. I now want to trim my cupcake to be 5 by 6 inches. So there's the six inches, go across five. Let me turn this. And it'll be approximate because we can trim this up later. There we go, six inches. Not quite, almost. So I now have a five by six inch postcard front. I now have the stabilizer and the backing. I'm gonna press those together and we will trim them down. Now that this is all fused together, I'm going to take my postcard trimming tool, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I'm gonna lay it over top of the cupcake so that it is centered the way I want it. I don't want any of my icing to go off the edge of the cupcake. I don't want it off the edge of my postcard. So I'm 
using my center line here and I'm using my quarter inch guidelines around to frame it well. And let me cut that one more time. So here's my postcard. It's ready for me to take it back to the sewing machine, stitch the edge stitch around it, and then I can write on the back and wish someone a very happy birthday. Now that I'm back at my machine, I'm ready to do the edge stitching around the edge of my postcard. I have the same thread in the top and bobbin. It's the Fabulux and Deco Bob combination. I have a wide zigzag set, stitch set at 4.5 millimeter. My stitch is 0.4 millimeter long, so it's kind of uh, close together. And I've set my tension to zero. That way my top thread will fly around the front and back of the edging and my bobbin thread will be one pretty much a straight line. It's going to cover my edge pretty well. So I'm going to hold those tails when I get started and I'm stitching off the edge of my postcard. I want the thread to wrap around. I don't want to stitch in uh, right next to the edge here. I want to wrap around. So let me get started. corners. I'm just going to lift and turn. Let me trim these edges off here. stitching around my postcard the first time. I'm going to stitch around it a second time to make a really solid edge and it should take care of some of the little hairs that are sticking out, little threads sticking out around the edge. So I'm going to take it to a 5 millimeter and down to a 0.2 millimeter uh, stitch length uh, which is the smallest my machine will go.
postcard is done and ready to put in an envelope and mail. To purchase any of the supplies I used today, visit debbiebrownquilts.com or visit your local quilt shop. Thanks for visiting with me today, and check back next week for another machine quilting video from Debbie Brown Quilts.